Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at linear sequences, uh, also called arithmetic sequences. Okay, And to start with, let me just write down a sequence. So 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on, right? You can imagine it continues. Now, we call this a linear sequence, or arithmetic sequence, if it increases by the same amount every time. It's also a linear sequence if it were to be decreasing by the same amount every time, okay? And we call this difference the common difference. So let's have a look at this one. We can see it goes plus two, plus two, plus two, and so on, right? It's always plus two. So this has a common difference of plus two, and because it's plus two every single time, it's a linear or arithmetic sequence. Now, the only other word you might hear sometimes is term. So each number in the sequence, okay, so like, this one is the first term, this one is the second, this is the third, right? So each number in the sequence is called a term. Now you might be asked to work out something called the nth term of a sequence, okay? And all that does is it's an um, expression that tells you what a given term in the sequence is. Okay, now that might sound a little confusing, so I'll demonstrate it first and then I'll show you how to work it out. So for this sequence I've written here, this has an nth term, of okay 2n plus 4 now the way this works is say i want to know what the first term of the sequence is first term i know i know but say it wasn't written down all i have to do is using i'll highlight it using this nth term wherever there's an n i just let it equal 1 so i say to find the first term well that's when n equals 1 so 2n that's the same as 2 times n remember so 2n is equal to 2 times 1 which is 2 plus four, and that equals six. And you can see that works. If I wanted the third term, I would let n equal three, and do two times three, which is six, plus four, and get 10, which you can see, that works. If I wanted the thousandth term, then I would just say let n equal 1,000, while well, two times 1,000 is 2,000, plus four is 2,004. So you can see why the nth term might be useful. So let me get rid of this, and I'll show you how we can work out the nth term if it's not given to us. The first step is to find the common difference, okay? So let's have a look at this one. It goes plus two, plus two, plus two. You can see it's always plus two. So what I do is I take this common difference and I put it in front of an n, yeah? I make it the coefficient of n. So you can see two n. I'm now gonna work out some values when n is equal to say one, two, and three, okay? Because bear in mind, I want when n equals 1, I want it to give me the first term, which is 6. Okay, So let's see where we're at. When n is equal to 1, my current nth term, which I've got as 2n, spits out 2, because I'm doing 2 times 1. When n is equal to 2, okay, my nth term will give me 4. Whoops. And when my n is equal to 3, my nth term is going to give me 6. But I want it to give me, okay, I'll draw another line, so we've got a bit more. What I want it to give me is, I'll change color, I want it to read six, eight, 10, and so on, right? So how can I go from this two to six? Well, I can add four. How can I go from four to eight? Well, I could add four. How could I go from six to 10? I could add four, okay? So all I need to do to adjust my nth term is keep it as two n, but then from over here, I just need to do add four. And that's how we work out the nth term of a linear sequence, right? Pretty easy stuff. I'll do one more example, okay? Say we have a sequence like this, uh, 15, 10, 5, 0, and so on. And we want to find the nth term of this sequence. Well, let's take a look. It goes negative 5, negative 5, take away 5. So we're going to get negative 5n. And remember, we're looking when n equals 1, 2, and 3. That's probably enough to work it out. So I'll draw in these lines again, just so we can see. And our current sequence, or actually we'll work it out first. So when n is equal to 1, negative 5n gives me negative 5. When n is equal to 2, negative 5n is negative 10, and so on. Then I'm going to write in the actual sequence, which goes 15, 10, 5, and so on. So to get from negative 5 to positive 15, I need to add on 20. So plus 20. Hopefully you can read that. It's not very clear. To get from negative 10 to positive 10, I need to add 20. And to get from negative 15 to 5, I need to add 20. So my nth term rule for this sequence is going to be negative 5n plus 20. 
Hopefully that makes sense. That's how we calculate the nth term. The other thing you could be asked, okay, is you could be given an nth term, okay, and then it could say, is the following number in the sequence? So for example, okay, um, is 12 in a sequence with nth term, say 3n plus 6? Now the way we work this out is we'll say, okay, well our nth term is 3n plus 6. You could guess, you could say, well, when n is 1, we get 3 plus 6, which is 9. When n is 2, we get 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 6 is 12. Yes, it is, but it might be a bit more tricky than that. So the one way you could do it is you could say, well, let's say 3n plus 6 is equal to 12. Then I could subtract 6 from both sides. Okay, I'm just going to simplify it uh, or rearrange it to get n on its own. So we're going to get 3n equals 6, and then I could divide both sides by 3, like this, and we get n is equal to 3. Now, why does it help me if I know n is equal to 3, right? Uh, sorry, that's not right, is it? I should have n is equal to 2. Now, why does this help me, though, know if it's in the sequence if n is equal to 2? Well, with sequences, okay, we're only putting an integer or whole number values into our nth term. So... If when we work out what n is from this equation here, if it's an integer or a whole number, then that means that that value is in our sequence. Okay, so I'll show you an example where it doesn't work. Say I said, is 12 in the sequence with the nth term? Let me rewrite it here. Uh, is 12 in the sequence with the nth term 5n plus 5? Well, let's work it out. 5n plus 5 is equal to 12. I don't know why I wrote 17. 12. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides like this, and we get 5n is equal to 7. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5, and we get n is equal to 7 over 5, okay? <clears throat> now, 7 over 5 is a fraction, okay? Hopefully, you can see that's not a whole number. I mean, we could write it as a fraction. It would be 1.4. So 12 is not in our sequence with nth term 5n plus 5 because there is no integer value we can substitute in to get 12. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials or head over to my TikTok, which is in the description, uh, to look at more worked exam questions.